Okay, so we had a request to uh, to show how to draw a, a bicycle in Adobe Illustrator, and we're going to use a few different ways uh, to draw a bicycle. One of the ways is to use the image tracing method, where Adobe Illustrator um, looks at a photograph and tries to interpret the figure and make it into a shape that we can then manipulate. An alternative way or Oh, yeah, the better way is to actually draw the bicycle by hand, which may seem tedious, but in the long run, it saves you a lot of time. Um, and so we're going to first do the image tracing method, and then uh, we're going to actually draw it manually after that. The first thing we want to do is to find an image of a bicycle. Even when drawing it manually, you want to use a photograph of a bicycle as a good reference point, because um, you may draw something and it may look to you like a bicycle, but to everyone else it may look nothing like a bicycle at all. So you really want to look at a reference image and kind of base that on your design. So we're going to first go into the image tracing method. I just did a Google search for a bicycle and uh, to pull up photographs. The What you want to do for image tracing method is you really want to select a image that has a white background. Um, that just makes it easier for the image tracing method. So this one looks really good. Um, so I'm just going to copy this, copy image, and then I'm going to hold Control and press V, and I paste the image inside Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to hold the Shift key, and then I'm going to click on the left edge, and I'm gonna, while holding the Shift key and the left mouse button, I'm going to drag it down and work with a smaller image. I want to shrink the image down or scale it down to size because the smaller the image is, the easier it is for the less processing power it takes and less memory it takes to do the image tracing um, in Adobe Illustrator. Now, obviously, there's a limit to that. You don't want to shrink it down too small. Um, so you want something, you know, really about the size, maybe a slightly larger than the size that you want to ultimately draw. Um, or the final image that you want. So something maybe like this. Then I'm going to click on, now whenever I click on the image, you'll see in the control toolbar up at the top, and if you don't see that up there, just click on window and then click on control, and then you'll see this menu bar that pops up, and up there you'll see image trace, and you're going to click on that. And what it does is it has a default setting uh, and tries to trace the image. And you can see it looks pretty good. It looks like a bicycle. It doesn't always turn out that way. Sometimes uh, the tracing results looks nothing like the original image. Um, but this one looks it's starting to look pretty close. And you can choose, you can, you have several def, whenever you, so what you want to do to change the tracing method. So what this does is it takes that photograph and it tries to draw shapes to resemble the final photograph. And this is just in black and white because um, that's probably the easiest computationally for Adobe Illustrator to do, so it wants to start off with that. Now to modify the tracing parameters, you click on this little box up here that says Image Trace Panel and something will pop up, pop up like this. Now there are several preset defaults that are optimized for different settings. So you have a high color photograph, you have a low color photograph, you have a grayscale, um, black and white and outline. Now if we click outline it will look, sometimes it takes a little bit of you know time to think, you'll see something that looks like this. Of course this looks nothing like it's supposed to. So, um, But it, there are many cases where outline you know actually does produce a better result than some of the others. This is mainly if you want a single shape or object to outline what you're trying to look at. Now if you click on high color Sometimes it takes, image tracing is a very computationally intensive thing. So this is, this has individual objects that are overlaying the image or really replacing the image to make it look like the original image. And that looks pretty good. Now you can choose low color. Um, that's going to be just a lower resolution, a fewer 
fewer objects being to draw it. Um, and if you're making the object really small, then low color might be a better option for you. Um, really depends on how large you want the object. So let's let's just do high color just for the sake of. Okay, and then we're just gonna exit out of that. And this is no longer a photograph, it is an actual object. And to show you what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna, I'm going to click on the image, go up to object, and then I'm gonna go to expand, click okay. And so now you can, so what, the, what expand does is it actually separates out the object into its individual components. They were, they had different components before, but now it actually isolated all the components so that you can now manipulate these objects. So one of the settings is to ignore white in that image tracing um, method. And that's probably preferable in this case, but I didn't do that. But anyways, you can, you know, ungroup. So right click on the object, right click, and then click ungroup. So now you can actually select, so let me, ungroup again. Okay. Now I can delete the white background. I can delete this white background. Now what you'll find with image tracing is it does a pretty good job, but if when you when you zoom in, you know, there's a whole lot of objects here. Uh, and so to change the color of the bicycle, like say you wanted a red bicycle instead of a black, you'd have to change each of these components each of these objects here, like you'd have to change this into a different color, you'd have to change this into a different color. And so it's not, I mean, over time you can do it, but it's not as ideal. So that's why I say it's preferable to just draw the image and actually might save you some time in the long run. Um, there is a way of trying to recolor it if you select the whole object. If you just highlight and select the whole object and then go up to color guide and then click on this color wheel, then you can edit the different colors. Um, so you can see it already kind of recolored it, but it doesn't look you know, fantastic. So you can change, and, and there's so many colors here that you're probably, okay, so, okay, so you see how that purple had changed? So now I'm starting to recolor you know, but notice that this is turning purple and this is turning purple. <laughs> so we don't want the tire to turn purple. We just wanted the, the bar. So that is kind of the thing I want to take home is that the image tracing tool, although it gets you something that looks like the original image and you might have some ability to modify things, but it's really limited. Okay, so now I want to, let's say you have an image that you want to trace that, so I'm going to, I like that. I'm going to hold control and press G. It's going to group all those objects together. I'm going to move it over to the side so you can see all the areas that you didn't delete. Um, now, if I wanted to get rid of that white spot, I can delete that. And so this will let you, um, this will let you, you know, make it more of a transparent background so that, you know, it can look uh, so that you can put it over on a different background, maybe. I mean, if you had a photograph added as, you know, maybe the countryside, then you can put this over, and it would kind of look as if it's in the countryside, as opposed to the original setting. Now, let's do another photograph where um, it has a background on it. Let's see. Let's, I had one already, kind of, that I wanted to use. Where'd it go? Ah, I think it was this one. Yeah, so I'm gonna copy this image. So we're gonna paste that in. Hold the shift, click and lower it down. Okay, so I'm gonna click um, image trace. Okay. And then click over to the settings. And I'm gonna do to high color. So like I said, it is computationally intensive. So sometimes it takes a while to do. And every time you change the settings, you'll have to redo the, the, um, okay. 
That looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to do object and expand. Click OK. And then what we want to do is we want to get rid of this background. Uh, so you can see here's all the different objects that it uses to reproduce that image. Okay, so I'm going to double click on it and let's see if I can. No. Let's double click on it again. There. Now I can select by clicking and dragging and while holding the left mouse button I'm dragging so I can create this little dotted line rectangle then a release and now I'll select all these objects and I'm going to click delete and I can go along here I can just delete away and and it's this is this is the part where it kind of time consuming and it may not always, you know, give you the results that you're, you know, really looking for. So, just wanted to show you that, um, that you just go along that image and start deleting all the different components. And you'll get, and you might get something that looks not too jagged. <laughs> you know, sometimes the edges might be fairly jagged. Like, for instance, if you look at this bicycle on the left, you see a lot of the white. And that may be difficult to get rid of. So that is using the image tracing method to draw that, something that looks like a bicycle. The next thing we're going to do is actually manually draw the bicycle, which I think is a far superior method. But I wanted to show you this method first as kind of a demonstration on, um, in case you, want, you didn't want to draw it.